good morning. Uh, I'm out and about in the flying chicken again. If you don't know what I mean by flying chicken, uh, check out my review of our daily driver, our Skoda or Skoda Kodiak. I think that's the Sean Connery version. Um, yeah, we're out and about again, and we're going to look at a car, funnily enough, and we might actually buy it. couple of videos have been concerned with electromobility and yes I am actually now hooked by electromobility but I won't be buying an electric car. Two reasons. One, they're far too expensive to buy outright so if I do get one it will be as my new company car and it will be leased but as the lease on this is still running for a little while I, yeah, I've got time to look for something suitable to replace it which we will be doing and those videos will also be featured here on the channel if you want to keep informed about those things don't forget to give us a thumbs up don't forget to hit the subscribe button and sorry I have to concentrate on the roundabout here if you have something to say do let me know in the comment in the comment section below this is uh, driving in a roundabout in Germany yeah they just wait for you to appear and then drive off. Dutch lorry driver. So thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm leaving that in, I'm not editing that out here. We will be doing a video soon, by the way, of life on the Autobahn. Everybody in Germany thinks, uh, everybody, sorry, around the world thinks living in Germany must be amazing because you have your de-restricted motorways. Well, yeah, it can be, it can be fun. If you have a really sort of fast, powerful car, you can have a bit of fun, but believe me, it's not as exciting as you think it is. But we'll come to that in a future video. So back to our subject for today. Um, we're looking at another car. Now, we've been doing some maths, some sums, my wife and I, and we've decided that we need another car. Now, that sounds very decadent, but this is purely, purely for, oh, this guy really doesn't know where he's going. This is uh, purely for financial reasons. We need another car. Now this Kodiak, I've had it for less than a year, and we've already covered over 30,000 kilometers, 20,000 miles, in not even a year. And I've got this thing for three years, it's leased for three years, and I said in that entire lease, I would cover 60,000 kilometers in three years. So I've now covered half of that in less than one year. So uh, we kind of need something else to um, eat up the kilometers, shall we say. And um, we're looking for something cheap and cheerful, something that's also a bit of fun. But because I'm, I've been living in Germany for 20 years, as you may know by now, but I'm still Scottish. So it has to be a financially sound proposition, which means if I buy a car for, let's say, 2,000 euros, a cheap and cheerful car, for let's say 2,000 euros, I want it to still be worth at least 2,000 euros in a few years time if I decide to get rid of it and get something better. So that's quite difficult, but I think we found something. I think we found exactly the right car we need. It's practical, it's small, but it's spacious, it's economical, it's reliable, it won't rust, or in fact, it can't rust. Well, what does that mean? Work that one out. It can't rust. I've said economical. Um, and it will hold its value, or it might even go up in value a little bit. We're talking about a car that is now 20 years old. When it came out, it was very innovative, but nobody bought it. It was too expensive and too ahead of its time. And I think it's the perfect car for us. So why buy another car? Why not lease a little electric car? Surely that's what I wanted to do and that's the way forward. Well, yeah, that's maybe something I would want to do, but 
I wouldn't be able to declare it as a company car, which means I couldn't write off the cost. So it means the lease payments, the insurance payments, any servicing payments that are made, let's say over a three year lease, I can't claim them against tax. So that's just private money that I've spent. And we've worked this out. Um, even taking, let's say, a small electric car like, I don't know, a Nissan Leaf or a Renault Zoe or even, you know, the little Volkswagen thing, what's it called? E-Up. E-Up. It's a Yorkshire car. Um, even if we took something like that, you know, we worked out what the payments would be for our mileage that we need. And over a three-year period, we'd be looking at at least, at least... 3,000, 3,500 euros. So when we did that, we said, well, why not buy a small car? Then it's ours. We're not throwing the money away like you would be in a lease. We can't use it for tax purposes. So let's just buy it, an old but sensible car that wouldn't cost that much. So buy a car, tax it, insure it, put fuel in it for that period of time and come up to roughly you know the same amount of money and we've, we think we've done that but we haven't seen it yet so more on that subject once we've seen it it's a disgusting October day by the way it's raining it's cold we've got the winter clothes back out um, so we shall see back in a bit we've just bought a little car and I'm not going to show it to you yet because we don't have it yet, obviously. We have to get it registered and all that sort of thing. But uh, when we get it, we will show it to you, obviously. But I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. What I am going to tell you is that it's a 20-year-old car that has covered just 160,000 kilometers in those 20 years. So that's 100,000 miles in 20 years. That's like nothing. Um, it has a full main dealer service history right up until its last service its last scheduled service it's due for a service now again and it's all been done at the main dealer so that must have cost him an absolute arm and a leg everything on the car has been replaced and done it's in good condition it's a bit grubby but as you would imagine a 20 year old car with 100,000 miles on it would be so it's going to get the full seats out um, proper cleanup I'll get one of those I'm gonna rent one of those what do you call them as a sort of carpet cleaning thing you know what I mean an upholstery cleaning thing I'll rent one of those for a day or two rip the seats out do the carpet get everything completely clean and tidy and then it will be a perfect little car any ideas what it might be yet let me know any ideas Sorry, slight continuity change. It's a new day. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to show you the car right now in this video. I want you to guess what it is. So you've got space down below for comments. Um, to recap, it's small but spacious. It's economical. It's practical. And it will hold its value well. If not, even go up in value over time. It's pretty much 20 years old now so that should narrow it down a little bit I'm not gonna say any more than that actually I will I'll tell you it's silver so there you are that's all um, I've spent the last couple of days cleaning it and when I say cleaning it I mean really cleaning it like I said earlier I've removed everything from the interior uh, scrubbed it I borrowed I rented uh, one of those upholstery cleaning you know, what, what do you call them, wet and dry cleaners, um, to really go to town on the carpets and the seats, the upholstery, and that, it looks like new now, which is brilliant. So, um, I actually thought about doing a video on how to clean the inside of a car, but there are millions of videos out there on how to clean cars. Unless, of course, you want to see how I go about cleaning a car, so please let me know, and I'll do that in the future. We'll do a, uh, a, a valet video at some point in the future. What I will be doing, though, is showing you how we repair it. There are a couple of things that need doing on it. It needs a service, sort of a basic service, oil change. I'm going to change the plugs as well. I'm going to change all the fluids, including the gearbox fluid. Now, it's a manual gearbox, and it does occasionally need a gearbox oil change. According to the manufacturer, they're sealed for life, but we all know that that's a myth. So I'm going to change the oil on the 
gearbox as well. Um, the brakes are shot all around, all four corners are shot, so they're going to be changed. But that's cheap and cheerful, that's nothing terribly exciting. But I will show you all of that in an extra video once you've guessed what you think it is. Um, anything else we wanted to mention there? I'm trying to give you some ideas and some clues, but I don't want to give it away too much. Actually, there is one bit, um, there is a clue I can give you. If you've been paying attention and watching our other recent videos, I may have mentioned this brand of car. Because when we were talking about electric cars, I said, my wife's not ready for an electric car yet. She still believes in certain other brands of cars. So we'll leave it at that. Go back and have a look, maybe you can find it. Um, so our next video will be a presentation video of our cute and cuddly new kilometer eating a runaround that we have purchased for the channel. So it's uh, going to be a little sort of journey with this little new car. I said it's little, there you are, now you've got it. Let's leave it at that. Comment down below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like what you see and hit the subscribe button. I've been looking at my statistics. We've, things are going up again. The, the, our, our clicks and watches and watch time is going up again, which is rather great. Thank you for that. But only 9% of viewers are subscribers. So come on, 91%, hit that subscribe button. Let's see if we can get a few thousand more subscribers by Christmas time. Actually, let's see if we can get 10,000 subscribers by Christmas time. It's the middle of October by the time this video goes on, so that gives us basically 10 weeks time, okay? 10 weeks time to get to 10,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can get that done. See you next time with a new car. Mm -hmm.